Hi, uh, my name is Chris Bailey, and uh, thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, we're here to talk about an upcoming event. Uh, the Public-Private Partnership Symposium is going to be held on February 28th at 4 p.m. at the newly renovated uh, Sandwich Town Hall at 130 Main Street in Sandwich. So I have here with me uh, a couple gentlemen that uh, are co-sponsors of the event, along with Bailey Brokerage and Consulting. Uh, John Kennan is the president of the Sandwich Economic Initiative Corporation. And Peter Ubertasio is the director of the Martin Institute at Stonehill College. John, hi. Hey, Chris. Uh, would, you, uh, would you tell us a little bit about the Sandwich Economic Initiative Corporation, the SEIC? Sure. Uh, we earned our legal status in June of 2010. We immediately engaged in um, think tank-like efforts, reaching out to department heads, um, Tom Cahare with the Regional Transit Authority, um, mass de uh, mass uh, development, uh, UMass, the um, institute, the Urban Institute, uh, more specifically Ed Lambert. We also reached out to Merritt, it's now Genon, to gather information um, to set a course for a well-defined plan, uh, plan for economic development in the town of Sandwich. And if I may, I'd like to read our mission statement to advocate and facilitate smart growth and sustainable development within Sandwich in accordance with the town's local comprehensive plan and to maintain and stimulate economic opportunities that will preserve and enhance the quality of life within the Sandwich community. Some of our goals implement elements of the local comprehensive plan that affect land use and economic development, such as expanding the town's property tax base, retaining the town's current job base, creating new job opportunities, expanding accessibility to local and regional infrastructure needs and services identified in the local comprehensive plan, and cooperating with surrounding towns in regional planning and economic development, um, the latter or last of which is key, uh, right on point for our whole reason um, to be here talking about public-private partnerships today. Uh, we can no longer operate in a vacuum. Our communities, whether it's Sandwich or any other community, just don't have the capital, the resources to um, engage or to build infrastructure um, alone. Uh, we do need to reach out to others. And um, we would use the private sector town or local government and private sector would engage and ultimately um, local government, uh, private sector and on a regional basis would make that cohesive or comprehensive um, public-private partnership. Uh, thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Professor Ubertasio, uh, you're the director of the Martin Institute. Can you tell us a little bit about the Martin Institute? Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to. The, uh, the Martin Institute was founded in 1990 uh, by an act of Congress to honor former United States Speaker of the House, Joseph Martin, who was a congressman from a neighboring congressional district to Stonehill College. And we are a repository of Speaker Martin's papers and other archives from a political career that spanned uh, decades. He was twice uh, Speaker of the House uh, for non-consecutive terms. And the Martin Institute was designed to serve as a forum for students and members of the local and regional community on issues of regional development and regional and state national public policy making. It houses our departments of political science and international studies and our departments of sociology and criminology. And that interdisciplinary group of faculty are all focused on uh, the mission of the Institute, uh, which is to instill in our students uh, a sense of civicness and public spiritness. And so the Institute is uh, a proud sponsor of events like this, which allow us to reach out to our local communities. I happen to be a resident of Sandwich and thrilled to be able to uh, provide support for this type of event in our town. Great. Thank you. Um, so let's talk a little more specifically about uh, the, the symposium and the subject matter is public-private partnership. Uh, which pretty quickly can become a pretty technical uh, endeavor. Um, and uh, we've assembled a panel uh, of experts uh, from various uh, points of view on the subject of public-private partnership. Um, and uh, those panelists include Paul Nidzwicki, who's the executive director of the Cape Cod Commission, uh, Stephen Torres, who is corporate counsel for the city of Fall River and also in private practice, um, 
Thomas Miller, who is a, uh, a private developer uh, who's done a great deal of public-private partnership work and formerly was with the uh, Boston Redevelopment Authority. And Rick Normand, who is the Executive Director of the National Council for Public-Private Partnership, and we're certainly very pleased to have him uh, joining us from Washington, D.C., courtesy of the Stonehill Institute. Uh, sorry, the Martin Institute. So, um, with that in mind, the, the event uh, has uh, a great deal of value, and we have a, uh, we have a pretty impressive uh, uh, respondent list of uh, people who plan to attend from the public and private sectors. Um, John, can you tell us a little bit more about how the SEIC is interested in public-private partnership and what exactly uh, do you hope to gain from this event? Well, I think, <coughs> excuse me, first and foremost is what Peter referred to a little while ago is um, a, a community um, a spirit, um, one that embraces all those elements of um, a community uh, that would allow for economic development while balancing the historical treasures of the town, but at the same time, on a more uh, sophisticated, is that word sophisticated again, <laughs> uh, level, um, we have needs, infrastructure needs. We have, we have wastewater needs. And how do you, how does the town of Sandwich go it alone? without private sector participation. How can, we can't do that, we just can't. Communities are cash strapped today. Um, there's significant value in public-private partnerships. As a matter of fact, I was reading last night, over 20 of the states in this country of ours for quite a while have had um, legislation that allow um, public-private partnership management of um, highways. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot to be said for Maybe our roadways would be better handled, managed, and, and um, maintained by the private sector. Um, it is not a new concept, but it's one that needs um, it, it's one that needs to be discussed more frequently than not, um, because we can't escape the fact that public-private partnerships is uh, the only way for the most part, that we're, we're ever going to be able to address all our infrastructure needs. I mean, we're talking tens of millions, hundreds of millions, I mean, just the wastewater alone. Yeah, only, certainly you know. wastewater is the dominant infrastructure yeah. issue on Cape Cod, and, uh, and I think uh, largely through southeast Massachusetts. And, uh, and there are lots of interesting ways to partner with the private sector yeah. uh, on, on wastewater also. Um, Peter, how does, how does an event like that, this fit with the mission of the Martin Institute? Well, um, we're thrilled to be able to sponsor an event that not only has all the great panelists that you've listed, but it's moderated by the president of the Massachusetts Senate, Therese Murray. And uh, that's really in keeping with the, the mission of the Martin Institute, which is to uh, bring together leaders from the public and private sector to engage in conversation uh, on how to solve some of the challenges that our states and localities confront. And I, I think that an, an event such as this in this age of austerity is really important because the private sector and the public sector uh, need to spend time together in the same room having conversations about how to achieve uh, the goals of a community uh, mm -hmm. to move it forward because uh, particularly since the recession, uh, neither one uh, is able to do everything that it would like uh, and achieve all the goals that a community may have. And the mission of the Institute is uh, designed to bridge the gap between academic theory and public practice. I also happen to be the, the chair of our Department of Political Science and we pride ourselves on having faculty members who know how to teach the academic theory and then also the practical side of of politics and political life and public policy making. And an event like this is really a, almost a perfect example of how an academic institution like Stonehill uh, strives to engage uh, the larger community in a conversation on these issues. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, that is the event that we're having. And, uh, and we certainly hope that you'll consider attending the event. Um, you can, um, you can RSVP to this event 
by going, uh, the, the graphic will run at the end of this uh, tape, I believe, um, but by going to the Martin Institute uh, and by phone or by email, and you'll see the information in just a moment. Um, and uh, we certainly hope that you will choose to join us for this. It's going to be a very educational event, uh, and there will be a nice, uh, nice reception at the end of the evening. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.